Good morning, friendship. Good morning. Good morning. Hope everybody's doing well this morning. Amen. Good to see everybody. Amen. To those that are watching virtually, good morning to you likewise. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. What a blessing it is to be able to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Don't look so gloomy out there. Let me see some smiles on your face this morning. But we are here to worship the, God, worship the Lord who has truly been good to all of us. Amen? Amen. 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 We're going to go ahead and get started with our devotion this morning. We ask you to lend your voices that we will have a hallelujah good time. Amen? Amen. 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 Amen.
say amen one more time. I want to make you smile. Grace and peace be multiplied to each of you from God our Father, His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and from the Holy Spirit, who both our Comforter and our God. Let me say good morning to the church. Good morning. What a blessing it is to be alive. Amen. What an even greater blessing it is to be saved. Yeah. For the reality again, that conviction is I'm not smiling on God, but how many of y'all know God is richly smiling on us? Yeah. And for that, I tell the Lord. Thank you. Let me first say thank you to each of you again for all your calls, emails, text messages, whatever capacity of communication we've experienced together this week. Let me say thank you so very much again for your thoughtfulness and for your prayers. Amen. Take the time out of your schedules. Again, I know that we're busy, mm -hmm. but again, I'm just thankful that you will think enough of us, that you would again uh, keep us lifted by way of prayer. A couple of things I just want to give you real quickly, if you don't mind. On the 15th of the month of <coughs> I think it's the 16th, it's only Tuesday, I'll meet with the deacons on that Tuesday night. We'll meet here in the uh, sanctuary at 7 o'clock, or we're in the life at 7 o'clock uh, p.m. That's Tuesday the 16th, I believe, at 7 o'clock uh, p.m. This is our second moment of business. And then on the 20th, that is going to be a Saturday. On the 20th of this month, I would ask that all of our members who would come and share with us for some important business on the 20th of this month. That will be at 12 o'clock noon, which is a Saturday. So if you would, please come and share with us. And I would that all of our active members would please come and be a part of the discussion that shall take place. There's some important business we need to get out. We want to make sure uh, that all the members who need to know are present and that way we can get that information out in a timely fashion. Amen. Amen. And then if you would, be kind enough. Keep us in your prayers. We've been asked to come to the Mountain Hill Church on the first Sunday at 8.30 a.m. Those of you who share or care to share with us you may do so. Uh, they've asked that we come and share with them by way of the preaching of their 100, I think it's some odd church anniversary. So if you would uh, keep us in prayer, then I'll be back here hopefully at 10 o'clock a.m. Uh, to continue to preach the word of God. Amen. Amen. I do want to say thank you to Sister Rita on yesterday for leading the effort. She and I had a conversation uh, yesterday morning, some things that were beyond my control uh, that caused my absence. So, Rita, if you would stand, if y'all would give Rita a hand for celebration. And I know Rita did do it by herself, so those persons that work with Rita, if you would, would you stand as well? And if y'all would give them a hand. That celebration. My understanding, Rita, that y'all had a grand time on yesterday. And for that, I tell the Lord, thank you. So continue to keep doing what you do, that God may be pleased with all of our being in this place. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all are happy and you know it? Amen. 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 Your face ought to surely uh, show it. Amen. Amen. We're making ready now to move again. Remember, tomorrow night we'll be in church school at 7 o'clock p.m. And then on Wednesday, we'll come again for Bible study at 7 o'clock p.m. So please, ma'am, please, sir. Uh, please be present so we can again come together to study the word of our God that we might rightly uh, divide the word of truth. Amen. Amen. And so again, I ask that you would be present that we have Zoom or even on Facebook Live that again the word of truth may go forth. Amen. Let us transition real quickly. We're preparing our hearts and our minds to the moment of gift giving. We know God loves a what? Yeah. God loves a cheerful giver. I just believe the more you give, the more God will indeed give unto you. You can't be God's giving. And that's no matter how much you try. Our deacons are coming forth now with our baskets and so it is. Uh, we're going to again ask that you would give first your tithe and your offering. And then after which I pray that you would give any capital campaign contribution uh, that you so willingly desire. There are two, there are four baskets today. Let me, let me uh, um, give you some clarity. There are four baskets today. You remember we've got two outside baskets. Those baskets are for our general time and public offering. Our black basket is for our benevolent fund. And then today, uh, we're going to now use the small basket instead of bringing up the jug to put change in. So you just move, use the small jug, the, uh, the small basket, put your change, or whatever it is you want to put in there. They're going to transfer that over to the life center. Amen. So again, if we could have four deacons, if y'all would come and share by way of holding our baskets this morning.
Let's put people based on the outside. Amen. So, so, so one more time, so I won't confuse you. I don't want to confuse you. Amen. So, so I do the outside basket of what you don't tie and what they offer. Our black basket is for our benevolent offer. And then our small basket is for our change where we used to put it into the jug. We're not putting it into that. Okay? So if you would, please, ma'am, and please, sir, bring your tithe and bring your offering. Wherever you want, let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you. God, we thank you for, again, your amazing grace. Thank you for the opportunity to give back unto you, that which we've given, that you first given unto us. Now, God, I pray today, God, that you would, again, bless our coming, bless our gift giving. Let it not suffer because of their giving. But I pray that you return, replenish, and restore to them that which they rendered unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And every heart that agrees said, Amen. Amen. Wherever you are, if you would come now, bring your gifts to our God. Call me. 
you have to be uh, uh, available to call me or have somebody to tell me that you are sick. Amen. 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 And so we're praying for those that are behind the prison bars. We're praying for those who are eating out of somebody's trash can. We're praying that God will just do what needs to be done. Because we know when he does it, everything will be all right. I want to invite you to come to the altars wherever you are. If you desire to stay where you are, that's cool too. For those of you who desire to be in the presence of God by way of the altar, the altars are not open when you come to the Lord's altar as we're preparing our hearts and our minds for family. God, that if you 
would just have gone the way, God, you would have helped us to see you high and lift it up. Yeah. I'm praying today, God, that whatever needs to be removed, I'm asking right now in the name of Jesus that you remove it as far as the east is from the west. Right. I'm asking, oh God, that you would tear down strongholds. I'm asking, oh God, that you would remove barriers. I'm asking, oh God, that you would help us, a people, to know, God, that we're not about what we want, but help us to know that we must be about what you want. So, God, I'm asking that you would allow us to seek first the kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness. And God, help us to know even now all these other things shall be added unto us. God, I pray today for these that are around the altar. I pray for their families. I pray for their kindred. I pray for their children. I pray even for their grandchildren. I pray right now, God, not only for them, but those that are watching from live stream. I'm praying, God, that you would bless, keep, and cover them. I'm praying not just for them, but even they that shall watch in the replay. I'm asking, God, that you would, again, do what needs to be done. God, I don't know even now what to pray for. I'm just saying, have mercy. Have mercy, God. From the choir stand all the way to the back of the water. Have mercy. God, I know, God, that when you have mercy, everything will be all right. Bless our time together. I pray, God, that you'll bless our coming in. And God, when we leave this place, but never from your presence. I pray that you'll bless our going out. It is in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. And every heart that agrees says, amen. 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 Hug somebody next to you. Tell them God loves you and so do I. As we are hugging, let us move around the sanctuary if we could. This is our moment of fellowship time. We're moving around the sanctuary. I'm asking that you would be kind enough to find you somebody. And I would that you greet them, greet at least three people if you would. Let them know God is still in town. Have your way, have your way. Let them know everything is according to God's plan. Let's move around our sanctuary. Let's move, let's move and find you something.
you love the Lord, why don't you say it one more time? Amen. I really love the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're preparing our hearts and our minds now for the Lord's table to celebrate what Jesus Christ has done over 2,023 years ago. And the fact of the matter is that he gave his life that you and I might have a right to the tree of life. Amen. Amen. And so I pray now that you will prepare your hearts and your minds. You've already been served as you enter into the sanctuary and those of you who are at home, I pray that you both would have your, both your wine and your bread, whatever symbolism that you have, if not your water and your grape, that you again would join within us or with us as we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. This time last our deacons and our deaconesses, they would line the altar as we do this together as we remember the sufferings and sacrifices of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If there's someone in the building today who desires to be served but has not been served, if you would raise your hand and someone will get you your sacraments. Trusting now all who desires to be served has now been served. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 11, I want to read a few of the following verses beginning at verse 23 says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed to bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, again, we thank you. Our Father, we thank you again for your grace and your mercy. God, thank you for the grace that you've given unto us to be partakers in this, the Lord's table. But God, thank you for your mercies that God you provided for us that even in the midst of our sin, sickness, and shame. God, you still allowed our golden moments to roll on a little while longer. Yeah. And so, God, today as we come, God, we come asking that you would again forgive us of all of our sins. Yeah. And I'm asking again, God, that you would cleanse us of all of our unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. I pray, God, that if we've done anything wrong to any person, God, that you would allow us even now before the sun goes down this day, yeah. God, to make right that which we have made wrong. I pray now, God, that you'll bless this wine that represents your blood that you shed on Calvary's cross. I pray that you'll bless this bread, God, that represents your bruised and broken body. Mm -hmm. God, that you gave that we might again have a right to the tree of life. Wow. Bless us, God, because even now we know we're not worthy, but God, help us not to be partakers of this unworthily. Well, God, we know that if we do that, damnation shall come upon our souls, oh, yeah. not discerning the Lord's body. And so, God, we thank you today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, yeah. God, that died that we might again live. I pray, God, that whatever we do, yeah. help us to do it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. It is in his name we pray. Yeah. And every heart that agreed said, Amen. Amen. That night in which Jesus was to be portrayed, he and his disciples were together in the upper room. They would be there together for the last time. And it would be there that he would say, As often as you eat this, do it in the remembrance of me. He took it, he broke it, and he blessed it, and he gave it to his disciples. At this time, let us all eat of our bread. Likewise, when he had poured the cup, he also stated the same words that often as you drink this cup, he says, This cup that represents my bruised and my broken blood, my bruised body, but the blood that represents uh, the wine that represents the blood. Yeah. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Amen. 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 Lord, we pray that you'll bless this wine mm -hmm. that represents your blood that you shed on Calvary's cross. Yeah. Let us all drink about wine. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You may have their seats. The Bible says that when they ate and drank, they went out into a mountain of olives. We don't have a mountain of olives. 
But we do have a world that's filled with sickness, sin, and shame. If the world is going to get better, Amen. the church has to get better. Amen? Amen. And we can't get better in and of ourselves, but we have to get better according to the word Amen. of God. Amen. Let me invite your attention real briefly to the 121st division of Psalm. And I want to read again in your hearing verses 1 and 2. It's my hope, trust, and prayer that we'll be able to investigate this text. We'll be able to open it up again that we might again hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Psalms 121, we pray that you will stand for the reading of God's word. When you have it, would you register by saying amen? Amen. Amen. The 121st Division of Psalm says in that first verse, King James Version, it says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. With the Lord's help and with your amen, I want to use for this sermon, subject, Lord, I need your help. Repeat after me. Say, Pastor, we're going to preach about. Lord. I need your help. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you're sitting. But the reality of this song suggests that God is our helper. Amen. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with, what you're going through. It doesn't matter the circles of life and or influence. The reality is whatever you are dealing with, the only help you need can only come from God. Right. I believe today there's some people in the building, some people in the place today that even now, Understand that you didn't make it without the help of the Almighty God. Mm -hmm. I believe there's some people in the place today that understand that resonates within their spirit that where you are, it was simply because of God's help. There's some people today that recognize the very fact that if I'm going to get where I am to where God would have me to be, the reality is I need the Lord to both hold my hand and guide my feet. And I wonder today if there's anybody in the midst of the Friendship Church that recognizes the fact that if we're going to be who God would have us to be, that God has to hold our hand and God has to guide our feet. That's why I'm grateful for the writer of the song. The hymn says, God, me old, thou great Jehovah. I'm just a pilgrim barren through this barren land. I'm weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. I mean, I'm grateful today because the writer recognizes the very fact that if God is going to hold our hand, and if God is going to guide our feet, then we have an obligation to do what lift up his name. And I didn't get out of my seat just to get out of my seat, but I got out of my seat to ask the Lord to stop by just for a little while if he don't stay long, because the reality is of my conviction on this first Sunday in the month of May is, Lord, I need your help. And every now and then, there's some people today need to shout together with the preacher, Lord, I need your help. Because whenever you find yourself in a bubble or in a trouble and you can't get yourself out, then guess what? you got to learn to call on the name of God. And I wonder today if there's anybody in the Friendship Church who's ever had to call on the name of God. Is there anybody in the Friendship Church that understands the fact that in your weakest moment and in your weakest hour, you needed to call on the name name of God. And I, how many would give the testimony this morning that day when I called on his name, he, he didn't come immediately when I called him. He did not come right when I asked him to. But here it is, First Lady Day, when you ever call on his name, your testimony becomes he may not come when you want him. Right. I wish I had a witness on him. But he always right on the 121st division of song is now a song of the breeze. Here it is, the writer here now positions the fact that in the midst of this song of the breeze, what the writer is suggesting is that this was a song, watch this, that worshipers would now sing as they made their way to Jerusalem to participate in, watch this, the great annual feast. 
It's right. here now that they understood the fact that where they were going, they were going to hear it is, understand that they would now lift up the name of Jesus. Yeah. And that's why the writer begins in the first verse by saying in the 121 verse, he says, I will lift up, watch this, my eyes unto the hills from what whence cometh my help. May I remind you this morning, it doesn't matter where you're headed, it doesn't matter where you're going. Can I just simply remind you this morning that if God is going to help you, then you got to focus your eyes on who he is. And I don't need you to know who he is just because I'm preaching him every Sunday morning. I don't need you to know who he is just because I unveiled him on Wednesday night, but I need you to know who he is for yourself. Because watch this, the reality is, in this life we live, Jesus says, we're going to have some trials, troubles, and tribulations, but I wait for the day I know it for myself now, because he said, be of good cheer, I have already overcome, I, I just wish yeah. I had somebody in the building today that will pull the constraints off of me and let me preach this message and say, Lord, I need your help. And y'all live here with me? I need the Lord's help. It matters not where I am. I need the Lord's help. It matters not what I got going on. I need the Lord's help. It matters not what I know of my matriculation and all. Now it's not what may drop in my bank account. I know I can't do it on my own. And, and I believe today there's some people in the place that got a real conviction. You're tired of people trying to handcuff you. You're tired of people trying to push you down. You're tired of people trying to scandalize your worship when you know what you're doing is for the Lord. And guess what? When they're trying to put you down, you better
because he's the confirmer of my help. He is the constant in my help. Watch this. I can't do it on my own. He has to work. do it for me. There's a verse 5 and 6 I got to dig out because in verse 5 and 6, watch this. Not only is the Lord according to verses 1 and 2, my, the source of my help, but now verses 5 and 6 says he's the strength of my help. Watch the text in verse 1, 21, verse 5, and verse 6. It says, the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. Look what it says in verse 6. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by what? Night. Are y'all in here with me? Here it is, the reason why I'm crying out this first Sunday morning, since the lock heart is because I need the Lord's help. Do I have to help him here? I just got to be transparent, but listen, everybody that's walking around in your circle ain't for you in your circle. So I want you to know today that some people in the building that sit where you sit, I want you to know today that everybody ain't here on the same agenda. And y'all been here with me? And I'm glad today that I can preach until I die and go in my grave. Watch this. I know what God has said because the text says the Lord is the source of my help, but the text says he's also the strength of my help. Are y'all in here with me? What, what, why is he the strength of my help? Let's read the text. The text says in verse number 5, the text says in 121 verse 5, the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shame. Upon thy right hand. Are y'all in here with me? Look, look what he says in verse 6 again. The Lord is the Lord shall not smite thee by day, nor the world, moon by night. Here it is. Verse 5. He protects me from my enemies. You better write that down, those of you who take your notes in here. Here it is. The reason why I thank God he's my helper is because every now and then he'll protect me from my enemies. Can, can I tell y'all today that there's, there's such word that we call frenemies? In other words, they'll be your friend when they're around you, but they'll be your enemy when they ain't around you. But here it is, you better understand that even in the source of your help, even in the strength of your help, you better know without a shadow of a doubt that you got a friend in Jesus. And y'all in here with me, and I'm grateful that they have to say to myself, what a friend I have in Jesus. Y'all gonna help me in here. All my sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry not some things, not a few things. I know I'm loud, but not a fraction of things. But if there anybody know in here, I am going to carry everything to God in prayer. Lord, I need your I need your help. It bothers me, April. We can cry out and shout about anything else. But when we come inside the sanctuary, we're going to sit silently like statues on Sunday. When I get the graduation, there are going to be parents that are going to be cheering to the top of their lungs. When I look at people in the park, they're cheering to the top of their lungs. When I look at people outside, just in family time, listen to me deacons, they're cheering to the top of their lungs. But how dare we come into the Lord's house where the Lord has been so good to us, where the Lord has kept us from all hurt, harm, hell, and danger, and we act like we don't know what to say. Well, let me tell y'all today, for those of you who are trying to put the brakes on the court today, you can't steal my, you can't, let me tell you this morning, I'm going to cry out to the rocks,
about it is, the text is, the text says that day when your enemies come up against you, it's really not them. When your enemies come up against you, it's the tailor, it's the devil in them. Are y'all in here with me? And I know I'm right about it. If y'all don't hear me say nothing else, that one on one friendship streets. Let me tell y'all one thing. Here it is. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but about evil and principalities of the darkness. Can I tell y'all in here, whenever the Lord comes to your rescue, how many of y'all know he will not only save you from your enemies, but verse 6 says, he'll keep you from the elements. I got to quit. I got to quit. Because my flesh is not doing right. I got to quit. The text says that, watch this, the Lord has to be my help. The text says, if the Lord is your help, he then, the island, must be the source of your help. Not only is the Lord the source of your help, the Lord is the strength of your help. Verse 5 says, he protects you from your enemies. Verse 6 says, he protects me from the elements. Verse 6 says, the sun would not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. What I like about this text today is the very fact the old church had it right all through the day and all through the night. The angels keep watching over me, my Lord. I, I'm grateful for the source. I'm grateful for the strength. But there's a verse 7 and 8 that's sticking up in my spirit. What does verse 7 and 8 tell you before your day? It said, not only is the Lord your source, not only is the Lord your strength, not only is he your keeper, the tech tag, he's the security of my help. Watch this. I'm in verse 7, verse 8. Some of y'all not saying nothing. But I'm in verse 7 and verse 8. Dick Smith was in verse 7 and verse 8. Verse 7 says in 121, the Lord shall, what's that word, preserve. I'm grateful today because even in my hell hole, I'm grateful God will preserve me. Are y'all been here with me? I'm grateful that even in my lion's den, God's going to preserve me. Even in my fiery furnace, listen to me good, ladies and gentlemen, God is going to preserve you. Are y'all been here with me? And I'm not trying to be politically correct this morning because I want you to be saved. And I want you to be sure of your salvation in the fact that when God comes back, then you know that he's going to call your name. Instead of saying, depart from me now, worker of iniquity, I want you to know without a shadow of a doubt, God has preserved you. I want to pause there and ask the question, is there anybody think God? God, he's preserved you. Was he the more about the street? Is anybody glad he's kept you? Is there anybody glad he kept you and, and, and covered you when you couldn't keep and cover yourself? That's why I got to ask the question this morning. How can you sit there like God had done nothing for you? How can you sit there like God had saw you through? How can you sit there and not open up your mouth and clap your hands and say When you need help. Are y'all need here with me? And here it is, people trying to be bridges. Since Lucilla's been gone, it's been nobody but the Lord. You've had family and friends to stop in and see an option. You had loved ones to take care of you. But can I tell you who has on the top of his list? His name is God. And I wish I had somebody in the building today that know that without a shadow of doubt, I thank God. God got my name at the top of his list. What? He's going to walk with me. He's going to talk with me. He's going to tell me that I am his all. And he's going to remind me that the joy we share as we tarry there, the world shall never know. I'm going to love it, but I want to tell you, if you don't hear me say another word, you better know the Lord is. Yeah. Yeah. Is it he your help? Is the Lord your help? The text says he keeps me according to verse 7. The text says he preserves me from all evil. The text says he preserves my soul. Verse 8 says the Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. 
What am I saying, beloved? I'm simply saying when you are at your darkest hour, on, when you're at your lonely state, right, right. when you can't figure your way in, through, or out, right. and that's where I am right now. I can't figure my way in. I can't figure my way through. And God knows I can't figure my way out. But I do know one thing. I need the Lord to help me. Do I have any help in here? I need him to help me at school. I need him to help me at my house. And I need him to help me at this church. Do I have any help in here? And I know that when God begins to help, the Bible says when he speaks, we better learn to listen. Because the text says, for those that call on him, the Lord shall preserve thy going out, and the Lord shall preserve thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Those of you right know there are two things that I'm giving the benediction. He the security of my help, which tells me he preserves me from all evil. He's the security of my help, my help. which tells me he preserves me until all eternity. Yes, right. All I have to do is trust God when I can't trace him. All I have to do is take God at his word even when I don't understand. All I have to do is go to God when my head is hung in the locks of my shoulders and say, God, here am I, standing in the need of prayer. And I wanted to ask y'all a question today. Is there anybody grateful that the God you serve, he'll be your helper? Is there anybody grateful that the God you serve, He'll stand by your side. Yeah. Anybody glad yeah. that the God you serve yeah. will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Yeah. The God you serve, you ain't got to beg for bread. Because guess what? Whatever you need. I thought I was at 101 Friendship Street. Let me try it again for those of y'all who ain't scared. Whatever you need. Let me, let me see, some of y'all won't say that because I'm preaching, but let me try it one more time. For those of you who thank God for God preaching, for whatever you need, how many of y'all know you can find it? If you need some patience, God got it. You need some love, God got it. You need some understanding, God got it. Whatever you need, you can find it in the hand of the Lord. May God bless you. May God keep you. May heaven smile upon you and give you peace. I try my best not to elevate my voice. I try my best not to get loud, but here's where I am. I can't let nobody cuff, can't cuff my, my, my spirit. I can't let nobody can't cuff my children. So if I can't do it here, I have to do it somewhere else. Because God has given me a charge to keep and a God to glorify. Are y'all in here? I meet deacons on the 5th, 16th. I meet the church on the 20th at 12 o'clock p.m. Shall we stand to our feet? Shall we pray? Our Father, we thank you now for the opportunity that you've given us to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray, God, that your word would fall on good ground and I pray that your word would spring up into everlasting and eternal life. I pray today, God, that whatever we've done here, I pray that you would use it for the smelling good to your nostrils. Bless our coming in now, and I pray every voice that is under the sound, every person that's under the sound of my voice, I pray that you'll bless that one out. It is in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion, of his Holy Spirit. Rest, rule, and abide with these thy people hence now and forevermore. And the saints of God said, Amen. 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 Amen.
a family of love. Y'all go in peace.